Whatever you do, do not purchase ladybugs to manage aphids on your plants. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pepper Geek. Today I'm going to be talking all about dealing with aphids in your garden. So we've been dealing with aphids for a very long time, and over the years we've kind of changed the way that we treat and manage this pest in the garden. Aphids are soft-bodied, sap-feeding insects that reproduce very quickly. The female aphids do not need a male to reproduce, so infestations can get out of hand incredibly fast. And it's really not uncommon for the aphid population to outnumber the population of beneficial insects. So a few decisions definitely need to be made when it comes to treating this pest on your plants. Before I get into some of these treatment plans, I want to talk about how you can identify aphids and determine whether you have an issue in the first place. You want to make sure you're checking on the undersides of the leaves, as well as inside of any curled leaves, because these are great places for aphids to hide. You'll also want to thoroughly inspect any new leaf growth, young foliage, or flowers, because it's really common to find aphids in these areas. Now, aphids come in many different colors, from green to black to yellow, and some of them are even fuzzy, so this certainly doesn't make it any easier to identify them on your plants. They're typically pear-shaped, and they always have cornicles, which are those two tailpipes protruding from the backside of their body, so if you see those, chances are it's an aphid. Another thing to look out for in your garden is the presence of ants. So aphids actually excrete a very sticky substance called honeydew, which the ants feed on. So if you're seeing a lot of ant activity in your garden, it could be an indication that you have an aphid problem. It's also worth noting that aphids are not rapid moving insects. So if you disturb them on your plants, you're not gonna see them scurrying away or hopping or jumping from leaf to leaf. And some of the older aphids have wings, but not all of them do. Now, if you've identified that you have an aphid infestation or you're noticing more than just a few of them on your outdoor plants, what can you do about them? The first line of treatment and the number one thing you should always do to control aphids in your garden is to attract beneficial insects. Insecticidal soaps, oils, and pesticides are non-selective, so it's always better to use non-chemical controls first so that you don't run the risk of destroying those beneficial insect populations. When it comes to beneficial insects, you have your predatory insects like your lacewings and ladybugs, which outright eat the aphid, and then you also have your parasitic insects, which actually lay eggs inside of the aphid and kill them from the inside out. So how do you attract those good guys to your garden in the first place? We always recommend to plant alyssum in your garden. It attracts those amazing parasitic wasps and also other beneficials like hoverflies. You can also plant other flowers like marigolds, cosmos, and asters to attract those good insects to your garden. You can also purchase green lacewing eggs. These guys will hatch, set up camp, and then feast on aphids as well as other pests in your garden. Whatever you do, do not purchase ladybugs to manage aphids on your plants. This is something that we used to recommend and we no longer do it. The problem with this is that they're not native ladybugs, they're vacuumed up from the wild and then brought in, and with them they carry diseases that can threaten your native ladybug populations. Also, it's very expensive, more than half of the ladybugs are just going to fly away, so you're wasting money by purchasing them. It's a much better option to attract native ladybugs to your garden, and you can do this in many different ways, from planting flowers to having a ladybug house and making sure that they have enough food and water available. If you're gonna go with purchasing beneficial insects for your garden, go with the green lacewing eggs. They're commercially grown and more efficient at controlling aphids on your plants. I'll leave a link below to some sources where you can buy them. It's also important to remember that a strong jet of water does a really good job at dislodging aphids from your plants. And manually removing the aphids and squishing them is very time consuming, but it's also an effective option. If beneficial insects are not enough and you're noticing that your plant's growth is becoming affected, then you can use an insecticidal soap spray which dehydrates the aphids. Before spraying any soap or pesticide, remember that these are non-selective, so you want to make sure that you're checking your plants very thoroughly for any beneficial larva that may be on the plant. You want to keep an eye out for ladybug larva or anything that looks like little grains of white rice because you never know, you may have an army of beneficial insects just waiting to come out for lunch and feast on your aphid population. And I would also stay away from any insecticidal soaps that have pyrethrin because those can deter those beneficial parasitic wasps. 
When you're applying your insecticidal soaps, you'll want to reapply every four to seven days, but it will depend on the brand, so be sure to read the instructions on the bottle. It's also important that you never spray these oils and soaps during the day because it can be harmful to the plant if it's in direct sunlight. A lot of people recommend using dish soap on their plants, and I absolutely do not recommend using any strong detergent because that's actually going to destroy the protective coating on the leaves of the plant. So when you do this, you're leaving your plant more vulnerable to disease and pests. So stay away from those detergents and soaps and use a good potassium-based insecticidal soap instead. And a little tip, there has been some research to show that hard water may impact the effectiveness of some insecticidal soaps. So if you can, use purified water or filtered water from the fridge. I know this may not be feasible if you have a lot of plants in your garden that you're treating, but it is a good idea if you're filling up a smaller spray bottle. If you're not having any luck with insecticidal soap, then you can use neem oil. I'll leave a link below in the description to the neem oil that we recommend. And typically we like to make a good diluted solution of this and the same rules apply when spraying your plants in the garden. You don't wanna spray neem oil when it's really hot outside or if your plants are in direct sunlight, but neem oil is very effective and we do use it when insecticidal soap isn't working for us. It's also really important that you don't spray these things when pollinators are active. So we tend to use our sprays at night so that we're not affecting the bees or other beneficial insects. It's also very important to have some tolerance for aphids in your garden outside. Aphid populations are frequently kept under control by the natural ecosystem and the beneficials, so you don't really have to freak out if you see a few of them on your plants. Sometimes we see in the community somebody will have a few aphids on their plant and all the recommendations are to immediately blast that plant with pesticides, but there are better options and better ways to manage this pest in the garden. So let us know how you manage aphids on your plants, and if they're an issue for this year, let us know any tips or tricks that you can share with the gardening community, because we're always looking for new recommendations on how to keep our plants happy and healthy. Thanks so much for watching, we'll see you next time. Believe it or not, we no longer recommend purchasing aphids. <laughs> <laughs> we used to tell people to buy aphids. <laughs> you know.